And now, with today's response to President Obama's weekly address, Dan Calabrese, editor of the North Star National. Thank you. This morning, President Obama, not surprisingly and understandably, extolled some encouraging numbers regarding economic growth. Uh, the other day, the government announced that the gross domestic product in the third quarter grew at a rate of 3.5 percent. That's good news. Growth is better than no growth. There's no question about it. But there's some things that we need to understand about keeping this growth in perspective and there are some things President Obama said that would lead you to believe that the reasons for the growth are A, not what they really are, and B, not such an encouraging path forward. First of all, let's keep in perspective. When you hear about economic growth numbers, you, you hear this from the president, from the government, you hear it from the media, typically they don't tell you what versus what. In other words, the GDP grew by 3.5 percent. Okay, grew from what to what? That's what they never tell you. This is a good thing to keep in perspective. It's a good thing to understand. In the third quarter of last year, the overall gross domestic product was $14.41 trillion. Then it started sinking like a stone, and it sank like a stone for three quarters. The fact that it's now going back up, it's good, it's better than it going down, but it's still only gone back up to $14.30 trillion. So even now, it's less than in the fourth quarter of 2008 when everyone perceived it quite correctly to be in a free fall. Growth is good, but we still haven't gotten back up to where we were this time in the Bush administration last year. Secondly, President Obama seems to understandably want you to believe that all of this is due to government spending. Now, perhaps some of it is. First of all, President Obama doesn't tend to give a lot of credit to the behavior of markets. The fact that you will get pent-up demand you will get factories that don't put in orders for several quarters and finally they have to or they don't have anything to sell. The fact that homes will sit around for a while and eventually somebody has to buy them. Economic growth is always more related to market behavior than it is to what the government does. President Obama doesn't seem to understand very much about how markets work and so he automatically attributes everything that happens within the economy to the behavior of government. Now about that. President Obama spoke at length about jobs saved or created, as if anyone can really measure that, in terms of federal funding of road projects and things of that nature. He also talked a lot about stimulus money that went to states to fill shortfalls in state, state budgets. We talk a little bit about that. Now, I live in Michigan, and granted the situation in Michigan is probably worse than it is anywhere in the country, but it's a useful object lesson. Michigan has not for years been able to get its budget under control. It faces a crisis every single year. It refuses to cut spending. It refuses to reform its business climate. And once again this year, Michigan faced a crisis. Well, guess what happened? The federal government offered stimulus money. Michigan took it. Michigan said, hooray, suddenly we have money. Suddenly we're in good shape. Well, it turns out it didn't really solve the budget crisis to any permanent degree, Michigan is still looking at raising taxes on everything from baseball tickets to bottled water because it refuses to cut spending. States let their spending get out of control in the late 90s when the economy was booming, in the mid, in the mid zeros or whatever we're calling this decade that we're now coming to the end of, when the economy was booming as well. When the economy contracts, states don't know what to do. They can't cut their spending, they can't get their budgets under control, and they go into perpetual crisis mode. By sending all this stimulus money to the states, the only thing the federal government did was it allowed the states to kick the can down the road so that they didn't have to reform their spending and they didn't have to reform their budgeting. Michigan is going to be back next year with the same budget crisis. The same thing is happening in California. The same thing is happening in all kinds of states all over the country. President Obama ended with a very interesting and very ironic note. He said that we're not going to get the economy back again on maxed out credit cards. Well, that's the truth, but guess what? If consumer spending balloons to the extent that the government wants it to in order to stimulate factory orders and job growth and things of that nature, an awful lot of people are going to have to do it by maxing out their credit cards, which they've already done to a great degree. It's a far more rational decision on the part of most consumers to spend less and to spend it out of their actual cash flow rather than putting it on credit cards. And speaking of maxing out your credit card, 
Of course, I'm sure you realize that the federal government raised its debt limit again this year by the greatest degree ever because President Obama has given us a $1.4 trillion deficit in 2009, and next year the deficit is only projected to be higher. Long term, we are not putting ourselves on solid economic ground by spending and spending and spending more in the way that President Obama wants the federal government to do. 3.5% growth in the third quarter. That's better than no growth. It's better than negative growth. I'm glad to see it. But let's not kid ourselves. There's a whole lot of fundamental problems that we still have to solve and President Obama is not taking the measures necessary to solve them. Indeed, in most cases, he's making them worse with his spending and he's kidding himself when he thinks that by propping up out of control state governments and allowing these state governments not to solve their budgeting problems, that he's doing anything but making the problem worse. Thank you very much for watching. I am Dan Calabrese, editor of the North Star National, and this has been this week's response to the President's Weekly Address.